and what we submit is not a difficult decision. For in this case, if you can see the truth, the truth that Jim and Kathy Friday tried to hide for so long, you will, when you go back there and you have your verdicts, sign, date, and mark that this defendant is guilty of all four of these counts. I love the passion and the approach of that prosecutor in Wisconsin saying, um, it's not a difficult decision. Oh, yes, it was. But as a prosecutor, you never concede that it's complicated or difficult because it, it should be pretty straightforward, that roadmap to conviction. And, of course, she was talking about James Curley Prokopovitz, the man accused of murdering his wife in 2013, despite the fact that her body was never found. Well, you know, deliberations kept going and going and going, and the jury was asking for a lot of things, and then they finally delivered their verdict. Let's watch it all go down. When you retire to the jury room, select one of your members to preside over your deliberations. The presiding juror's vote is entitled to no greater weight than the vote of any other juror. If you need to communicate with the court while you are deliberating, send a note through the bailiff signed by the presiding juror. To have a complete record of this trial, it is important that you communicate with the court only by a written note. They are just beginning the deliberation process. After two weeks of testimony, there were a few days off uh, last week. There was one juror that was uh, showed up sick one day that left. And then today, two more jurors uh, were told that they were no longer needed because they were the two remaining alternates. Chantley Painter is uh, joining us now from the Brown County Courthouse in Wisconsin, in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And uh, Chantley, we couldn't hear the names because uh, we, of course, didn't want to broadcast the names. Do we know um, the two jurors that are not on the panel, were they uh, men or women? Two females were dismissed as alternates. They are free to go home under the admonition of the, of the court not to discuss the case, not to look anything up because they may be called back for service, he told them. And when the tumbler rolled, the name was drawn, the first one that was announced, she sort of I kind of awkward, awkwardly stood up in the courtroom a little bit and, you know, no, you could sit down. Uh, but uh, they, they are gone. The jury is deliberating right now. So that means we have six women, six men, back there deliberating the fate of Jim Prokopovitz, considering all four counts against him. And like I told you earlier, Ted, this is a young jury. Most of them are in their 20s, their 30s, 40s, and very attentive throughout the entire process. And again, this morning during the defense closing, and especially during the state rebuttal, because that prosecutor was worked up, she was fiery, and you could feel the passion inside the courtroom. The fact that this family came before you because of what happened to them, not because their mother is missing, because the defendant killed her and hit her. We are learning that the jury has a question. Let's go in together live. Thank you, you may be seated. I'll let the record reflect the original appearing parties are present. We're outside the uh, presence of the jurors, and the jurors have submitted um, a request. The request is list of evidence of what was admitted and taken out, please. It's a first note from this jury. They've been deliberating for a couple hours. Sent out a note, wanted to know about the exhibits, and the court took a second for the attorneys to hash out what they wanted to do, but they're going to send back a list of the exhibits to the jury. Exhibits wanted. 57, 85, 86, 87, 92, 99, 100, 112, 113, 114, and 115. Uh, so, Chili, talk to me about what exactly are these exhibits that the jury wants in this second note, please. 
Right, well, yeah, we're taking notes as the judge is reading what the jury has requested. And again, earlier in the first note, they requested a list of all the exhibits in the trial. So that was sent back to them earlier. So now they're requesting several exhibits, including the defendant's August 2nd, 2016 interview. That's a video. It likely could be played in court if they want to watch that again. Also, the maps of the sludge ponds, which were very key in testimony, and of course the landfill, which of course Court TV has some video of as well. And then the forensic analysis of the cell phone records from the witness, um, Tyler B Bailing, the cell phone expert, and then the letter authorized by witness two, that confidential informant, that letter that he wrote, that he um, wrote in June, June 5th, 2019, and then mailed, of course, to the Brown County Sheriff's Office about Jim Prokopovitz's alleged statements while incarcerated. And I have yet once to, to say anything to you that implies even remotely that I think that you did. Well, if it wasn't him, then it was one of the other officers. Well, that's why he hasn't said a word. That looked right in. You right see what I mean? the chair around like this, right here, stared me right in the face. I know you did something to that woman. I know you did. That's before. This is not. Oh, and when I get accused like that, I'm sorry, I will fight back because I didn't well, do anything. That's why I brought him with because I don't want to fight. I am not a fight. I'm not going to fight. Good. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not going to hurt anybody. I'm not going to hit you. I'm not going to try and hit anybody. Perfect. I tell you right now because you I don't want to have you in trouble. You, you're, you, you don't want to be caught. You didn't want to be caught today on the stand. And you lie. And you lie. All right, you don't want to be caught. Okay, I'll admit, I killed her. I killed her. There, I killed her. Kathy had nothing to do with it. I mean, what you just I don't know. She, I don't know where she is. I, 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 don't, know. Her. No, I don't know how I killed her. Tell me how you I didn't. So I can't tell you. I can't tell you. I don't know. Uh, the jurors have sent two notes. Um, I'm going to read them in reverse order. Uh, we would like to postpone until tomorrow morning. So they obviously would like to adjourn and go home for the night. Then they have one requesting a list of exhibits, but they say we would like to have these exhibits by tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m. So what can we expect tomorrow? They return at 9.30 and then they just get back to work? They just get back to work, the judge telling them that they can't communicate or anything about the case until they're all there together. So all 12 have to arrive in the deliberation room before they start work again. Again, that'll be 930 Eastern and again, they'll deliberate all day as long as they want to until they reach this verdict. In the state of Wisconsin versus James M. Prokopovitz, file 19 CF 716. As to the offense of first degree intentional homicide as charged in count one of the second amended information, we, the jury, find the defendant, James M. Prokopovitz, the verdict has been marked guilty. As to the offense of obstructing an officer as charged in count two of the second amended information, we, the jury, find the defendant, James M. Prokopovich, has been marked guilty. As to the offense of conspiracy to commit perjury before court as charged in count three of the second amended information, we, the jury, find the defendant, James M. Prokopovich, guilty. As to the offense of perjury before court, as charged in count four of the second amended information, we the jury find the defendant James M. Prokovovitz guilty. It's dated Green Bay, Wisconsin, the 27th day of February, 2021, and it bears the signature of the four person. Rough weekend. Let's bring in Ted Rollins, Court TV anchor. Uh, James Curley Prokopovich, 22 hours of deliberations, Ted. Uh, and those words from the prosecutor, this is not a difficult decision. It, it was a difficult decision. It was a tough one. Uh, but in the end, I think the jury looked at this case and said, there's no other reasonable explanation. Yeah, um, it was. But I, I would not have wanted to be on this jury. There was no body, no crime scene. You've got a denial from the defendant from the beginning. He was accepting to interviews, and that's ultimately what got him because he was lying about his girlfriend the time they started their relationship. This was the classic circumstantial case with not a lot of circumstance. I mean, there were other possibilities. And then you throw in that the victim in this case had tried to commit suicide twice and after the second time said, next time you'll never find my body. Um, this was a tough one, but I, I think that the bottom line here is that the prosecution team did a fantastic job with what they had. The detective, Roman Ehrenstein, 
was on this from the beginning with a little bit of a, you know, he was off it for maybe a month or two. But bottom line is they had a gut feeling that this guy did it. And they spent the time to get to a point where they could get into a courtroom in front of a jury. Eight years they spent. They waited and waited and they took their time. And here they they rolled the dice, went for it. And in their heart of hearts, that man is guilty. And they were able to convince the jury of that fact. Yeah. Uh, the bottom line is, I think prosecutors around the country have to look at this case and say, OK, we've got that case that, you know, we're just not a thousand percent confident. We know the person did it, but we just don't know. Sometimes you got to go in there and, 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 you know, trust that the jury has the same common sense that you do. Ted Rollins, and, uh, th go ahead. I'll give you the last word. And, and I was just going to button that up and say, and it, it's OK to lose. You know, if, if you as a prosecution team, you just if you think he did it or she did it, roll the dice, go for it. Absolutely. I, I agree 10,000 uh, you know, percent. The victims need that. They need that. Ted Rollins, Court TV anchor. Thank you, sir.